I really like this gun. How beautiful is this gun? It's really nice. It's so beautiful. In this video, we are going to be looking at two very different uh, FX Dreamlines in different stocks and chassis and discussing why this is so important. It's a critical part of a rifle system. It what can, it's what connects you to a rifle. It's like tires on a car. Tires connect the vehicle to the road and if you choose the wrong tires, you notice it straight away. I think it's a topic that's very much um, overlooked, so we're going to dig into that a little bit today, and I'm gonna show off two purpose-built systems and talk about why I've chosen these specific setups and what I'm gonna be using them for. I think you'll find it quite interesting. Before we jump into the deep end and discuss stocks and chassis, let's talk about uh, the rifle system that I have inside the chassis. This is an FX Dreamline. It's one of FX's more uh, entry-level PCPs, but what makes it great for, su for something like this is that it is a very versatile and modular gun. And because of that, a lot of aftermarket stock and chassis manufacturers have immediately jumped on board and built fantastic aftermarket setups for it. So if you compare this to something like an Air Arms S510 or a Dayset Huntsman, um, you've got the ability to switch from like a sub 12 foot pound 177 to a 100 foot pound 30 kill um, by switching a few parts and um, adjusting a few things within the gun and not spending a massive amount of money, um, which I think is quite unique. And that's one of the reasons I've chosen this system to discuss stocks and chassis with. Before we get to the beautiful GRS stock, which is right next to me here, I know everyone wants to see that. We're gonna first talk about this futuristic looking setup over here. This is the Jet Air chassis by Scandinavian Air Guns. Um, very, very well built chassis. I've known about Scandinavian Air Guns and the chassis for a number of years now. Scandinavian Air Guns was started by a man named Oscar Gillenhammer, who's a, um, a friend of mine. I've known him for a few years. He's competed in like extreme bench race and RMAC and um, has kind of, you know, been in the community for a while and Scandinavian Air Guns had a stand at Iwa Outdoor Classics a few years ago and we were able to check out um, the stock. It's been a while for it to get to the market because they've had to iron out a few things and just refine it a bit, but it was worth the wait. It's come out, come out really well. Um, one of the things I like about it is the fact that they've really thought about all the different uh, connections and implemented some things that you normally only find on, on firearm chassis. I think they took some some notes from like MDT's notebook um, where they've got an arca rail, for example, that goes all the way the whole length of the gun from front to back. And basically an arca rail is, is what you find on a lot of camera tripods. Um, you can pop it in standard camera tripod that you find in, in almost any camera store, as long as it's nice and solid, tighten it down and you can find the center of gravity and hold it in that tripod, which is fantastic for hunting. And, um, I've actually done quite a bit of hunting like this. Um, aside from that, you've got M-lock slots at the bottom, which means you can add a whole lot of accessories like, uh, you know, Picatinny rails, you can add sling swivel studs and all of that. Um, and then of course you've got this, I don't know what I'd call this, like a barrel guard or something like that, but it, it attaches onto the chassis. You can actually remove it if you don't want it, but it just goes over the barrel. And I find that nice, especially on a free floating barrel like this, where you can rest the gun against a tree or have it lying in the back of your truck and it's not gonna, you don't have to worry about your barrel getting dinged up or bent or losing point of impact. Moving a little bit back, a nice vertical grip. Of course you can change this out, but it comes with this vertical grip. And that's something that's also quite popular amongst sort of PRS and NRL shooting scene. I'm um, seeing a lot of guys switching to these vertical grips. And just above that, a nice high tilted Picatinny rail. Now, the Dreamline, I don't wanna say unfortunately, because it obviously gives you more shots before, but the Dreamline is a gun that has a very high magazine. And what this means is that on most um, guns, and you'll see on the, on the Dreamline I have next to me here as well, even an extra high ring from most manufacturers will not be high enough to clear that magazine. 
there's only specific mounts that get high enough but with the chassis on you can use pretty much any mount you want because the rail lifts you above that magazine is designed specifically to be above the magazine and with that um, tilt in I think it's 20 or 30 MOA I can't remember um, you don't have to worry about leaving the optical center of your scope with this rail on if you're zeroing at like 25 to 50 you're going to be pretty close to optical center and that's great as well and then of course a lot of the magic is at the back here you've got a nice um, th uh, thumb cutaway here so you could shoot in the thumb up position which a lot of people do with a vertical grip um, fully adjustable cheek piece butt pad that can move up and down i like the way this adjusts you basically loosen it with your thumb and then you've got a push button system where you can slide it forwards and backwards so that's pretty cool and then my personal favorite and something that not uh, no other chassis manufacturers offering right now is a flat bag rider that's integrated into the chassis where you can simply push a button and move it up and down i absolutely love this feature it stays parallel to the to the chassis and it's it's really nice for shooting um, off a bench with so what am I going to use this, this chassis system for? Um, you know, I was talking about purpose-built setups. I'm actually going to be using this as a field target gun. Now, I am not a well-known field target shooter. I am not particularly good at field target the one, one or two times I've tried it. But it's just one of those things where I, we, there's now a local field target club and I want to just give it a go. Um, it's good for building friendships in the community and it's good for... Um, just broadening your skill set and, and learning stuff from other people. So I'm going to be putting a 177 barrel in here. I'm going to be changing a few internals to bring it down to sub 12 foot pound and make it uh, very harmonically tuned at, at sub 12 foot pound. The new 177 liners are, are, are very good. So I'm hoping to start competing with this. Probably in hunter field target. I've got a... Um, a helix first focal plane on here 60 to 24 by 50 by element optics and i'm going to be turning it down to 16 times magnification and doing some probably some hunter field target oh two more things to mention one of the reasons i wanted to use a chassis system for field target setup is simply because with the arcarel and with the m lock i can probably make or buy a hamster to fit underneath here which is very important when, uh, by the way, not, not a fluffy pet hamster. The, the hamster is a block normally made of wood or aluminium that goes underneath and allows you to get more elevation. And what this allows you to do is if you are sitting down or, or taking a shot at a steeper angle, you can put your elbow on your hip. You can have something in between your rifle and your hand and to give you a bit of elevation. And you can keep those joints locked and it gives you a much more stable shooting platform so hamster is going to be something I'm going to be looking into the other thing I want to mention is look around when you when you want to choose a chassis system for a Dreamline because there are a few different options out there and all of them are really good um, you may have seen my video previously of a, an Aeron chassis that I had on on a gun which are I used in a night vision ratting video Fantastic chassis. Aeron make dedicated field target chassis. So if you want to get a chassis specifically for field target, that might be the one you want to look at. And then as a hunting setup, I don't have a, a Dreamline here with a, a Sabre Tactical chassis. However, I do have a Crown, which has recently been announced. But this is a Sabre Tactical chassis for the Crown. And what makes this great for more of a hunting setup, the guys from Sabre Tactical are very well versed with Hunting and pest control is that it, it does have a folding buttstock so you can keep it nice and compact in the back of your truck and when you need it, you can pull it out. So as mentioned, um, every chassis has their strong points and weak points and you're going to want to look around before you make a final decision. But I will say this, with all three of those options I mentioned, you will not go wrong. All of them are absolutely fantastic. And now for the one that to juggle all these guns here the one that all of you have been waiting for <laughs> the dreamline grs now i know straight off the bat that there's going to be some some level of confusion here because you will have seen myself and gerard and rule from air hunters talking about the stock but it's kind of hard to find online or find any information about it 
And the reason for that is that at this stage right now, these are only available in South Africa. That will change, they will be available in the rest of the world, but the reason they're only available in South Africa, the story behind it is that GRS stocks are extremely popular in South Africa. Everyone knows what a GRS stock is. That can't be said about the US and a lot of other countries in the world, but for some reason, we just know about GRS stocks, which is a Norwegian stock brand, and we use them a lot. They're very popular for uh, Feltskit competitions. Feltskit is a discipline that's kind of like PRS, but it's completely centered around hunting. So you shoot from different positions, but instead of shooting at a gong, you shoot at an animal-shaped target, and obviously the you know the vitals count for more. Um, and GRS stocks are very popular for for Feltskit competitions, and just in general as hunting rifles and collectors rifles because they're so beautiful. Um, they're very, very popular in South Africa. But Andres Loebscher, who is uh, the main man at Patriot, him and myself both have GRS stocks on our firearms and love them. And we kind of got together and we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could introduce a GRS stock to an FX air gun in South Africa? And because I have a pretty good relationship with GRS, I'm a GRS uh, ambassador. I spoke to Oscar at GRS. We made plans and this was the result. This and the Crown GRS stock, which is also now available on the Crown Mark II, which is fantastic. But super beautiful, um, and it just adds a whole new dynamic to an already beautiful setup. It's totally different to the chassis I just showed you. It's a lot more traditional. What I love about it is it reminds me so much of my other hunting rifles that I have. When I shoulder this gun, I would never know if you just handed me this gun and I was blindfolded and you told me to shoulder it and asked me what I was shooting. I would not know if this was my 22250 or my 260 or my 300 WSM. They all feel exactly the same and that's kind of what we wanted to achieve. Let me just show you here how similar these are. Here's the Dreamline GRS. Yeah, is my 22250. You can see it's exactly the same, the same stock shape. Okay, this does feel a bit heavier than the Dream One, but um, the feel is exactly the same, and that means that I can switch between this gun and the Dream Line, and this can almost become my trainer. I can get used to the Dream Line, do my pest control, and when I pick up the 22 to 50, it doesn't feel foreign. It feels like it feels like I've got one gun that is an extension of my body. GRS also make, um, I wouldn't say more modern stocks because they're not modern but they make this guy <laughs> that's heavy Ugh. GRS also make this guy which is the warg i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right norwegian so you can help me out but the warg is a stock at the back and a chassis at the front um i've really come to enjoy this and i've got some awesome hunting videos coming up with this rifle my 300 wsm but you get the idea, even my 300 WSM feels the same to shoot as my Dreamline, which is quite something. So what's wrong with the original Dreamline stock? Well, there's nothing wrong with the, the stock that, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the walnut stock, the synthetic stock, the one that comes with the Dreamline as standard, nothing wrong with it. But this does feature a few extra um, things that actually do help from an ergonomics point of view. Um, it's not just a... A pretty face not just nice laminate wood um, for one it's got a, a six degree uh, offset grip with a thumb up position here which feels extremely comfortable and I've got big hands and I just find that this um, feels much nicer to hold than the original Dreamline stock which is quite thin obviously people have different preference but I like this if you're a lefty unfortunately this will not feel very good to your hand. But the other thing that I like is that you've got the adjustability of length of pull and you've got an adjustable cheek piece and this you literally push a button, push it down, pull it up, very straightforward. The reason this is important is, remember I mentioned earlier those very high mounts and you can see on this gun where the magazine is and where the, the scope is compared to the rail. It's extremely high. This is not normal, most rifles do not have a scope mounted this high. So you need a cheek piece that can match that. You need to be able to put your cheek to the stock, close your eyes, get comfortable, 
open your eye that you look through the scope with and you should be looking straight through the scope without any issues. You want to be able to put your cheek right there, look through the scope and have it perfect. And I can do this on all of my GRS stocks and all my rifles so that it, they all feel the same, which is absolutely fantastic. And lastly, it has a URT or Anschutz rail at the bottom, which again is just, it adds versatility to the stock. If you don't want anything there, you can leave it open like this. But if you want sling stud, you can pop it in here, slide it forward, tighten it down, put it wherever you want it and have a sling stud. You can add a Picatinny rail, you can add a hamster, you can do whatever you want. So if I wanted to use this for field target, I could. But this is going to be my hunting setup. I've got a little silence on the front and I'm really looking forward to getting out and taking a few shots with this guy on camera for you guys to see. Now. How have I set this up and how is it different in terms of power output and projectiles that I'm shooting and everything to the chassis gun? As I mentioned, the chassis gun is my dedicated field target gun now. This one I've set up to shoot 218 caliber Patriot Javelin slugs, 23 grain at around 920 feet per second, which is not pushing this gun too hard. It's capable of it. Any harder, I think you'd be pushing the limits of, of what it can do accurately. And efficiently but that's 43 foot pounds from a 500 millimeter barrel um, and it shoots very very accurate with that, accurately with that setup um, so for a hunting setup I know I can take stuff out to 100 meters plus with this no problem and it's going to be a lot more effective than a standard pellet gun if you put it that way um, shooting let's say 16 or 18 grain pellets at the same distances it's going to give me the edge so really really like this and I can't wait to smash some pigeons with it. <laughs> Will it become my primary hunting gun? Not a chance. It's not a workhorse. When, I, when you do pest control jobs, when you need to go out and shoot monkeys or shoot dussies the whole day or shoot 120 pigeons in one morning, you want a tool. You don't want a, a collector's item. You want a tool and you want it to do that job better than anything else. And for me, the impact is that gun. The Maverick is that gun, this is not that gun. Impact Maverick, you got a bottle, you got way more shots per fill, you got a longer barrel, a shorter overall length, um, just everything about it, larger magazine, everything about it is conducive to being able to get a job done. Whereas this, this is something that you take out for a, a recreational hunt in the morning, you sling it over your shoulder, you go for a walk, you shoot one or two ground squirrels and you take them back home and you eat them or something like that. It's a I'd say it's a collector's item because it's it's a real classic it's really beautiful um, but it's also made to be used this one also has a helix first focal plane on it um, i'd say just by chance but i've intentionally put this on here because it's a great hunting scope as well um, so i'm sure you're going to see some scope cam footage through the scope on this gun in the near future and that's all guys i just wanted to have a quick discussion on stocks and chassis i don't want to get all this new stuff and start playing with it and using it and um, learning new things without sharing that information with you um, i love being able to share what i learn with you guys and um, i look forward to being able to display some of these beautifully crafted pieces of wood and metal on my channel moving forward thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time oh and one more thing if you haven't noticed yet my merch is finally available. It's available in the US and it's available in the rest of the world. I will put links down below where you can buy caps and shirts and all kinds of stuff, hoodies, and it's a very practical way of supporting me and it looks really cool and it's very comfortable. So I would appreciate if you check that out.